New this morning, if you do the crime, will you serve the time? Fox 12 investigators are digging into data surrounding Portland shootings. Specifically, how often people get away with pulling the trigger. Fox 12's Kendra Kent joins us now live with more on this special report. Kendra. Good morning. Well, the short answer to that question is no. Most of the shootings never end with an arrest. And we recently sat down with the officers tasked with investigating these crimes to ask why. We finally made it almost halfway through 2023. And there's finally a glimmer of good news on the gun violence front as Portland's endured three years of record shootings and murders. The bright spot? So far this year, shootings are down roughly 14% in Portland compared to the past two years. And Portland police hope the city's efforts to curb the violence are making headway. It's a positive direction for gun violence, but we need to be really cautious. That's because a grim reality still casts a massive shadow over the progress. A lot of those cases end up being closed pretty quickly. Not solved, but cases gone cold. The vast majority of shootings never end with arrest. It's incredibly heartbreaking, actually. To be clear, data shows Portland police made arrests in just over 50% of murders last year. Many of those are shooting deaths. But when you look at other shootings, ones where people get hurt or property is damaged, the success rate plunges. Fewer than a quarter of those cases are solved, according to police. Victims' cooperation is always my biggest hurdle. There's a lot of people that show up at hospitals with gunshot wounds. Um, we get called to go talk to them. They won't tell us where the shooting happened. And so we, there's not even any investigative steps we can take to attempt to find a crime scene, to find video. Detective Sarah Clark has been with the Portland Police Bureau for nearly 20 years. She's assigned to the Enhanced Community Safety Team. It's the investigative counterpart to the Bureau's focused intervention team. Together, the units are tasked with fighting gun violence in the city. Fox 12 sat down with Clark and the team's supervisor, Sergeant Patrick Maudsley. We're averaging, you know, four to six probably injury shootings a week. Last year, I think we averaged 42 cases per investigator for the year. A crushing, relentless workload. The more cases go unsolved, the more they stack up, spreading detectives thin. I am so overwhelmed a lot with how many cases we do get. These days, police don't even bother investigating most non-injury shootings. The team says roughly half of shootings in the city involve gangs. Officers told us there are more than 30 gangs in Portland, but about a dozen of them are believed to be responsible for the majority of gang-involved gun violence. Uh, a lot of times there's a, you know, familiar faces over and over again at different shooting scenes. More recently, police say there's also been a huge surge in gun violence related to people experiencing homelessness, accounting for roughly 30% or more of the remaining shootings in town. In both populations, it's hard to get witnesses and victims to come forward. Uh, there's a lot of not talking to the police. I think there's a lot of fear of retaliation uh, also. And we have seen in many cases there is intimidation uh, against witnesses and victims to not cooperate, not participate in uh, prosecution. A lack of witnesses leads to little evidence, which leads to no case. All very frustrating for Clark. I end up talking to parents a lot of the time um, after these shootings, and they get upset that we're not doing better investigations and we're not finding out who shot their children. Um, when in the reality is, is their children adult children, um, know who shot them. They know what the incident was about, but they're unwilling to speak to us about it. Officers say the violence has only grown more alarming as they've noticed trends of younger teens and children becoming involved in shootings, as well as a dramatic increase in the number of bullets flying. We regularly have shootings with 50 or 60 rounds fired. And all of those bullets are going somewhere and impacting something. And police say there's another pressure impacting their work. If we have a gang violence problem and, uh, you know, half of ballpark, half of our gun violence is related to gangs, but we don't talk about gangs, then it's hard to address that, that issue honestly. And therefore, it's hard to make progress and find solutions that actually will work um, for that 
portion of our gun violence. There's also a struggle between balancing civil liberties and exploring new policing tactics. Oversight groups guiding ECST and FIT are interested in adding gunshot detection monitoring software to neighborhoods most plagued by gun violence and finding new ways to track people most at risk to become a suspect or victim in a shooting. And that's one of the challenges with that list is how do you create that list? Uh, where do you get that information from and how do you vet that information so that um, you know any biases are removed from that and you're just collecting the data. One thing is for sure, building rapport with victims and their families is crucial for trust. They have to feel comfortable and if I've created a a relationship with them. And that trust could help bring real change. More willing witnesses lead to more evidence, then more arrests, and fewer suspects on the street lead to fewer shootings and less retaliation. We need to focus on this violence in particular. Moving forward, for me, this should be a priority for the city. This is the highest level of gun violence we've seen, even though we're down a little bit. We're not now you might remember that a Portland City audit released earlier this spring recommended that Portland police develop new policies for tracking and using gang information in investigations. That report also says that last year the Bureau made it a goal to solve 45% of non-deadly shootings. Reporting live in studio, Kendra Kent, Good Day Oregon.